we're gonna funk you up. Today we're gonna be looking at the Burson Audio Funk. This is a class A headphone amplifier, class A, B, regular stereo amplifier for your stereo speakers. And this thing is pretty heavy. Is it worth the price that you pay? Let's find out. So this is a very interesting unit because it is a class A, class A, B unit. Uh, and because of that, I wanna test its power output because they claim some pretty high numbers for being a class AB amplifier. Claim 45 watts per channel on your outputs here and three watts on your headphone amplifier. Now, there are buttons on the front, a power button, and there's a button right here that's gonna switch between either your stereo output or your headphone amplifier output. And then you have a gain selector for your headphone output as well. The potentiometer, and really all of the buttons are all aluminum. And I gotta say, they're actually really well made. That's the first thing I liked about this Burson Audio. It is made very, very well. The, the quality that went into building this is top notch. Everything is milled out of some very nice aluminum. And it's also very, very heavy. It's not like those Class D that you're used to that you can just toss around. And that's because this is Class A, B, and Class A technology. So there's gonna be a lot heavier parts in here that you're not used to in those Class D. Because of that, it's also gonna be a lot more inefficient and it's also gonna dissipate a lot more heat. And we're gonna get into that in just a minute. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back of it, it does have RCA inputs and it has a 3.5 millimeter jack. And these binding posts are no joke. These are really nice binding posts. These are insulated binding posts. And I gotta say, they did a good job putting these on here. And of course, there is a jack for the external power supply. Now this is the first miss that I see on this Burson unit. And that's the fact that it doesn't have any type of balance input. When we're talking about the price range that the Burson Audio is in, I expect to see balanced inputs on it. And so the fact that it doesn't have balanced inputs is one of those times where I say that they really made a big miss on this. I, I just don't understand why they would only do an unbalanced input. We're gonna have to take it over to the test bench and see exactly how well this actually performs. And then let's talk about its performance afterwards. Now I wanna make sure I get clean and no clipping on my wattage. So I hooked up my oscilloscope and I went ahead and also hooked up a clamp meter. Now these are to some four ohm dummy loads. That way I don't have to blow out my eardrums and we make sure that we're getting true four ohm output out of this person amplifier. Now I did take this measurement a few different times and got around 2.42 amps to between 8.89 to nine volts. So right between 21 and a half and 21 and three quarters watts per channel. Now I wanna say I was surprised by the results, but I'm not. The results were about 21 and a half watts per channel. So a total of say 43 watts, okay? That's all it's doing. So max, you know, if they said 45 watts total output, they'd be pretty spot on, but they said, 45 watts per channel. Here's the deal. It was never gonna do 45 watts per channel. Let's just get that out of the way. And here's the reason why we know that. If we take a look on the back, it uses a 24 volt, three amp power supply. And the 24 volt, three amp power supply even comes with this certificate that says it does 24 volts and three amps. That's great but we know that watts equal volts times amps. So 24 volts times three amps equals 72 watts. That's 72 watts for both channels and to run all these LEDs and to turn it on and turn it off. It needs all that wattage for everything. So 72 divided by two is a maximum of 36 just for these. And then, you know, a little bit more for that, but a maximum of 36 for that. Now that's assuming 100% efficiency. Class D amplifiers, we can get pretty efficient, but class AB, not so much. Maximum about 65% efficiency. So take that 36 watts, add in the efficiency, well, we get what we got, 21 and a half watts per channel. And that's not bad actually for this particular amplifier, but it's definitely not 45 watts per channel. Here's another issue that I had with this. When I got done testing this, this thing was hot. And I mean like really, really warm to the touch. Like I, I wouldn't say that I was gonna burn myself or anything like that, but if it was a really cold night, I wouldn't mind like sticking this under the covers and sleeping with it because it would have warmed me up. I mean, that's how warm it was. 
Now, the third issue is that when we got to like right about here, a little over three quarters of the way during the test, which we were using four ohm dummy loads and a one kilohertz signal, the amplifier just shut off, powered right off. We were done. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Look, I wanna give you my final thoughts. I did listen to this on some speakers and it sounded good. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not gonna say anything bad about the sound of the amplifier. It sounds fine. It sounds really good, actually. I have no issues with that. I do have some issues with the fact that they claim 45 watts per channel and it's really like 45 total watts. Maybe that was just lost in the translation. I don't know. But what I will say for sure is that it is made very, very well. At $550, I personally couldn't buy it. And that's because it's a I, I know this class A, B, and class A, but I could get a class D for significantly cheaper that does have balanced inputs, does more power. I just, I just could do that and I, and I don't mind that. But there are some of you who really care about class A, B technology and class A and do not, for the life of me, will ever buy a class D amplifier. This is who this is tailored towards. And as long as you can live with 21 and a half watts per channel or thereabouts, you could buy this. And it would be a very well-made amplifier. If you don't need your balanced inputs, you can live with that output, which I think most people in a near field listening position can do that just fine. Go and pick yourself up a Burson Audio Funk. I think you'll like it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. This is Toyd's DIY Audio. I'm out.